All right, I'm gonna walk you through the basic steps necessary to create a raster image from something like this. So in Kirimoto 2.45 or later, select your machine, make sure in CNC mode, then you can drag and drop an image onto the bed. <clears throat> this requires a little bit of uh, sort of playing to see what works for you. Um, by default, when the image comes in, it's going to be the size of the bed, which is obviously way too large. So we're going to scale this thing down. Probably, let's just start with uh, 600 uh, millimeters to begin with. No, that's not nearly, that's still way too big. Let's make it uh, 350. Let's see. Um, all right, cool. Now, uh, the other thing is the height of it, which is going to sort of relate to the bit that you're going to use. And I think in this case, from my experimentation, um, what I'm doing is I'm setting the height of this thing to about a millimeter tall and that might not seem like a lot but it's going to be enough to give us the contrast we need with our tool tip and the second thing you're going to do is uh, go into tools and make sure you have a taper mill that's uh, appropriate for the use uh, case um, and uh, in the video I show you how to measure that and then under contouring you're going to check your uh, you're going to use the tool check the tool um, it's a little bit tricky for step over because step over is rated in tool width um, and for a taper mill the tip is sort of zero and so we need to sort of play with what makes sense here um, and through a little bit of experimentation. Uh, and the other thing is that for your feed rates uh, you're going to want to match the feed rate for contouring and also um, under your limits you're going to want to set your Z feed max rate higher because in contouring you're not really plunging the way you would normally. So um, let's go and slice this and take a look at what this uh, produces for us. Um, again there's just a lot of experimentation that goes into what works out well for you. Um, this is way too many lines um, for the image that we're going to want to produce um, and in fact this argues for a much larger step over, so let's say like 0.5. <clears throat> you don't want these too close together because when the mill um, plunges into the, in the material and creates a wider channel, it's just going to look a little bit um, different. So this doesn't look all that significant, but when you go around to doing the actual cutting, um, and you can do an animation here uh, to sort of see what it's going to look like, uh, these animations can, can take a while um, and Actually, what you're going to want to do is go into preferences and set the animation uh, quality uh, substantially higher. That's going to give you a much better feel for what this is going to end up looking like um, in the end. Uh, obviously, a higher uh, mesh density is going to take longer to render. Um, there is a new feature for fast forwarding with new animation, which speeds things up a little bit. You can sort of see it go down here. I'm not going to walk you through this in the whole video. Um, this gives you a feel for what your final image is going to be like. So um, just looking at this, I think probably having steps closer together uh, than what I just selected makes sense. So let's try this um, again and see what it looks like. Um, yeah, it's going to take a little bit longer because I selected a higher mesh on this one. Um, should have thought about that before I did it. Anyway, um, one last thing I'm going to show you for this is uh, before we go to the actual cut, because uh, this will give you a sense of the step over, which I think probably is going to be appropriate for what we're going for here. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be good. Um, a raster in the horizontal isn't always that attractive, so one thing you can do is uh, rotate this thing 45 degrees, and so um, select the image. It, because it's got a lot of um, vertices, it takes a long time to rotate manually by hand. And so what you can do is you can do the Shift O target and we can rotate this thing by negative 45 on the Z. And then we can uh, slice for this guy. So this is going to um, give us a, a biased um, raster at 45 degrees. And I think that sort of ends up with a, a nicer looking um, image when you're done. So um, you can spend the time to preview this. Uh, the preview is computationally uh, intensive and so 
um, maybe not worth your while to do ahead of time if you're if you're satisfied with the way this previous here. There again, some experimentation is required. I do think these lines are a little too close together, so I'm going to move them further apart again. And then let's uh, move over to what the uh, the final thing looks like. I'm going to go ahead and render this thing and then fast forward through that um, in the video, so you don't have to watch all of that. All right, there the uh, the animation is complete. Um, we can zoom in and sort of see what it's done. The deeper it cuts, the wider the grooves are. Um, you can see just the cuts without the um, without the backing image by that. So you can see that the cuts actually do produce the image that we're looking for. You can turn this back on um, so you can see it overlaid. So we're going to go and cut this thing and see what it looks like. I'll start out by measuring the diameter of the bit and then the distance between the tip and the end of the uh, chamfer area here. Enter that into Kirimoto and then I will center the, uh, or rather set the origin and I use a little piece of cellophane for this so um, all I do is go in and jog it down until there's a little bit of tension. And then start to do smaller step ups and step down. And once I have the tension, that's basically my zero point right there. Set that as the origin and then bump it up just a little bit before I start to cut. Now, uh, the second thing I do is run the bounds on the cut to make sure that we're within where we want to be, so let's run the bounds on this thing. It's going to give us an idea of how big that area is going to cut out. Make sure that we're within safe, and then it's going to be good. Now, for this, I'm using a piece of MDF that just has a little bit of black paint on it left over from another project, so it's going to be a little bit sort of janky, but you know, it'll give us an idea of what we're going to get. So I'm going to start a time lapse here and watch the cutout. So that turned out pretty good. Um, <clears throat> let's see, I'm going to clean up some of the fuzzies on this because this is basically just low quality MDF and a, a really cheap kind of mushy paint on top. If you want better results, you're going to have to <clears throat> use a harder material, you know, a nice wood with a finish or a, a hard, uh, like acrylic paint or <clears throat> something like that. So let's see if this fuzzy cleanup makes this image look a little bit better. Hope you found that useful. Uh, like, subscribe, and uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments and feedback below and see you on the forums. Thanks for your time.